Hey there folks, this is Deckard Spade, and today we're going to be talking about Lawbreakers. The first thing I wanted to note about this game is it looked very much like an Overwatch cash-in at first. The commercials that had shown up on the internet and television showed very little in the way of suggesting gameplay. A couple of hints on how the characters actually work are shown inside the trailer, but it doesn't actually tell you how to play the game. The game's fighting takes place between the Law, which is also known as Track, and the Breakers, who are the Lawbreakers of the game. Both sides have the same classes, each one having its own reflected character representing it. And every character class has different movement abilities and weapons to use across the map. Now you can say that Overwatch has done this before, and you're also partly right. This game has characters and skins and weapons that are unlocked through gameplay and microtransactions. But in truth, that's about where the similarities end, because this is a first-person shooter. Others have done this before. The main difference with this game is, it does it well and it doesn't stick to the same ideas. You see, one of the biggest draw-ins for this game that I've seen so far is the maneuverability of the classes. The maps are multi-tiered, and the movement and gameplay is fast-paced. The gameplay modes are pretty similar to things which I've seen before. Domination, item pickup, you pretty much either guard a transmitter, or you guard some sort of item in order to get something, or you're guarding territory. This in turn racks up points and the one with the most points at the end wins. The only deviation I see from this is Morty Ball. I'm not calling it Blitzball, because Blitzball came from Final Fantasy. This actually has an AI ball that sounds like Morty from Rick and Morty. Ball in play. Get ready for Blitzball! You took the ball. Hello? This AI ball has to be picked up by you and then brought to a goal in the enemy base. Or you explode with it in 20 seconds. Otherwise, it's pretty standard when it comes to shooting your enemies and trying to get across the map. The movement in this game is fast-paced, and it actually has you moving both on the ground and in the air. Something that the trailer actually tried to hint at. If I had to compare this game to anything, I would say it plays more like Quake 3 Arena. However, the gameplay curve at the start is a little steep, because it doesn't have a playthrough tutorial. It's all videos. This isn't necessarily bad, as long as you watch the video, you learn more about the character classes and what they do, as well as a little bit about the game. The downside to this is that you don't actually play the game and learn how to use your character until you actually play your first match. And the matchmaking in this game is... random. It's not to say that you couldn't build your own match. It has a custom setup for you to be able to do that. But you have to have friends who play the game and invite them individually. Otherwise, there's just a quick play function. And when you click this, you have no control over what map or game type that you're playing. As a game, this is nothing new. However, it does have a solid foundation as an FPS. You may eye roll at the microtransactions and some of the corny one-liners that they say, but the game is a refreshing breath of fresh air that calls back to older games. A simpler time where health packs existed, where the fast-paced combat actually stands out more than the characters. And while this isn't always a good thing, and it may not fit everybody's idea of a good game, I do think that if you want to scratch that itch for old-school games, this might be the thing for you. What do you guys think? Please leave your comments in the section below. And as always, thanks for staying a while to listen.